Hello, welcome to the Courageous Self-Care Podcast. I'm your host, Christina Marlett. On this show, I love to share about self-care that goes beyond bubble baths, chocolate, and wine. It's self-care that even goes beyond exercise, hydration, sleep, and nutrition. Why? Because those are all great and they work very well. And I have found that they work even better when we go deep inside and resolve any issues that are going on there. And that's why it takes courage. So this kind of self-care can get uncomfortable. You generally need a guide for it. And the best part is that it is transformational. We have a great show planned for you today. I have my guest expert here with me, Shauna Marie. Welcome. Thank you. Lovely to be here. I'm so glad that you are here too. And uh, for those of you who are watching the video and not just listening to the podcast, I love your background, Shauna. It's beautiful. Your mm -hmm. art back there. It's very flourishing. That is my love of Italy. Mm. Oh, beautiful. So Shauna, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I am a interior decorator and also I have started a program that I'm calling Happy by Design. So it brings you to that happiness doesn't just happen. You don't stumble over it necessarily, that you, you can design it as well. And so it's, I've brought myself here after a bit of a, a sad time in my life. I lost my uh, a family member and just before he passed, actually it was at my ex-husband, and just before he passed, he said that cancer gave him more than it took. Mm. And that brilliant statement uh, brought me to a new, a new way of living. That no matter what, there's always something positive. Oh, I love that idea and that philosophy. And it sure makes life so much more interesting when we see it from that perspective. What would you say is your favorite self-care practice? My favorite is a meta meditation that I do in the morning. So it starts out with, and it's been measured, which they've, they've put um, electrodes on on Buddhist, monk, Buddhist, Buddhist monks, and they can actually measure it, that it changes everything within your system, slows down your heart rate, well, slows down, like it brings it into everything into homeostasis. And so I start out with um, myself and then my family members, friends, someone I don't know, but you know, that I have seen around, someone who's giving me difficult times in my life or in the past, and then just to the world at large. And so I start with May I be safe, may I be peaceful and happy, may I be healthy, may I live with ease and grace. And then I go with to the same, may, may you be safe, etc. So it starts my day with thinking about myself, thinking about others, thinking about how I can forgive, and just how fortunate I am to be in this, this beautiful, big, beautiful world. Mm, well, I am just covered in goosebumps or truth bumps. <laughs> So I can identify that. And that really speaks to one of the foundations of courageous self-care, which is getting connected. And it's not just getting connected to others, it's connecting to yourself, the part of yourself that is connected to all living beings and all energy throughout the universe, and then connecting to your body, connecting to spirit. And it sounds like that meditation does that for you. It does. Beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, we'll pause here so that I can tell you about a free resource I had created for you. It's called the Courageous Self-Care Daily Checklist. And it's not just a checklist. It is an entire teaching that gives you more depth of understanding about what Courageous Self-Care actually is. So if you would like to access that, you can go to christinamarlette.com and get your copy. Okay, Shauna, on this show, I love to hear about people's stories of everyday courage. So what would you like to share with us? Well, an everyday courage is, I've started connecting more with my intuition. And what I also call it is my woo-woo side. <laughs> and I've, I've not wanted her to come out because she seems too out there. And so now I realize that she is part of me, she is me, and it actually serves me. It gives me a compass and a guide to go towards what feels good, 
meeting with you, having this beautiful interview. It feels good. It feels right. It, it speaks to all the things and it makes me think more about self care. And when I was getting ready for this this morning, I thought, you know what, I'm going to the, I'm going to do something shortly because I'm moving right now and just do it for me. Spend, doesn't matter if it's five minutes or five hours it changes things and that's my intuition talking and, and there's more to it than just that but as i practice it it practices me and grows and grows and grows so more truth bumps all over me <laughs> but you're not comfortable you no know, it makes me feel like oh you should hide don't do this people are going to think you're weird crazy and that you think you're better than you are Mm -hmm. so that's all me talking obviously right. because no one's ever said that to me <laughs> right and if they are that's probably not the kind of people you want to associate with <laughs> They're not my tribe <laughs> <laughs> i really can identify with what you said about uh, there were so many layers in there so the first one is about your intuition and following it and that to me is definitely about what feels good and what feels right. And the thing about intuition is that it doesn't necessarily make sense. And it can, it does take a lot of courage to follow it. And then what I find on the other side of moving through that fear and coming into the decision of, okay, I am going to follow this guidance. It's, it, to me, it makes life worth living. Have, do you have any examples of when you followed your intuition and it's turned out really well for you? Oh gosh. But <laughs> yes. one, one time I woke up and I realized it was time to do something and I didn't want to do it. And that was walking the Camino, which is walking for 40 days, sleeping in, in hostels along from the, from France to, to Spain. The, it's called the Camino de Santiago trail. And I didn't want to do it. I, I, don't, I like comfort. I don't want to sleep in a bunk bed with a bunch of other snoring people and uh, <laughs> what else they're doing. And then walking and being uncomfortable. And then it just, it just kept coming at me. And so I did it and it was truly one of the best things. And I did it alone. That was a big, another intuition is don't do it with other people. Mm -hmm. A few people came along my path and they were beautiful souls and it, it served me. But just being on my own and listening, listening, listening until I could not listen anymore. And that's what it took for me. I needed more time than just a 15 minute meta meditation. Yes, right. My parents have actually done the Camino Trail two times and they're going back again this year because they love it so much. And just like you have received so many gifts from it. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Well, that is an amazing story. And did it just pop into your head? Like, how did that happen? It popped into my head about 20 times. Yes. <laughs> and then I decided uh, with another intuition is to, to dedicate it to something. So on the back of my backpack, I put, what are you grateful for? Without a question mark, without anything else. And until I had an injury on my leg and I was walking too fast, I didn't have a lot of engagement. Then I slowed down because I had to slow down because of this injury. And then people would walk up behind me, see it and decide to engage. And that's when my Camino became a Camino. Wow. Oh um, my gosh. That so is I had so these fantastic. beautiful people come up to me and they would, I had, I had it all set up that they would write out what they were grateful for. And I would carry their, their gratitude to the, um, to Santiago. And literally if someone needed it, I would let them open it up and read it. And they would say, what is this? It was in their language. It was exactly what they needed. And they were almost frightened of how bang on it was. And I didn't read any of them. But people would just pick them out and it was intuition at its finest and mm -hmm. self care because I felt so good. Mm, yeah, yeah. The other layer I hear in there that is another foundation of courageous self care is that of self expression. So I can tell that you incorporate that into your life a lot with your uh, home decor and then how you chose to express yourself on the Camino and through what you're wearing. Um, how would you explain or relate to the idea of courageous self expression? 
Ooh, beautiful question. It's figuring out who you are and what feels best instead of mirroring what somebody else has or does or is. And certainly as an interior decorator, people say, well, just do what you like. But I, I, don't, I don't fall for that. I don't go for it. <laughs> I want them to give me four or five things that they love, that they never get rid of, that they, when they wear it, they feel good, that when they look at it, like this beautiful picture behind me, this reminds me of Italy. This reminds me of my time there. It's, it's beautiful in itself, but it has something deeper. And this scarf I purchased the one day when I'd lost another scarf when I was in Spain. So it's nothing special or, or anything except that it means something to me. So that to me is, is like a courageous self-expression, I guess. Mm -hmm. Not based on what somebody else thinks or believes or what's on the runway or, or in the design magazine. The same with myself is what's serving me. And it takes, it takes a, a lot of digging, it takes a, uh, some not so comfortable. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I can identify with those. <laughs> I'm sure you can. Yeah, yeah and the uh, one uh, what I believe is that the greatest journey we go on in this life that has the greatest rewards is the journey into ourselves and discovering who we really are. If we're brave enough. Yes. And then sharing that courageously with others. It's one thing to, oh, okay, this is who I am. But if you are then basing all of your decisions on how other people might perceive you, that's only part way. You've kind of gone halfway in your journey and it takes that ounce of courage to move through. Yes. And it's through podcasts like your own and and just listening to it and and taking a nugget maybe everything you say or i say doesn't relate but take a nugget that's how i look at design as well is look at a at, at a photograph here's a, a design book pick one thing that you like you don't have to like it up them all because that's impossible what's okay. the one little thing like you're saying what is the one piece of self-care that works for me what and it makes me think about it i like those questions i like the the delving into something that means something to me not what i think you're going to be impressed with right not at all because you may look at it and think okay another another crazy girl but if, <laughs> <laughs> which i know you would never judge me that way no <laughs> But there are parts of me that I'm I'm listening to my own self-talk and the old the old tapes that are running. So the more I do it, the easier it is, and the more in align with who I am. Mm, exactly, I love it. So uh, we'll pause here, and I would love to say to everyone who's listening or watching that I love getting to meet you and hearing your stories of courage too. So if you are interested in being a guest expert on the Courageous Self-Care podcast, you can go to christinamarlette.com and apply. Uh, there's an application form there and uh, I would love to connect with you. Shauna, if people are wanting to connect further with you, where should they go? My website is shaunamarie.ca. That's S-H-A-U-N-A-M-A-R-I-E.ca. And I've written a book called Get Your Life Back After Cancer. And I'll be offering, and it may seem, basically I'm dealing with fear. There's fear and love. Those are my two belief systems, that everything stems down to one of those things. And so I'm, I'm offering a PDF of the five, five ways to alleviate the fear that you have to sort of choose it, look at it. The same with self-care that you need to identify it first and then do some practices to help sort of uh, dilute it. Because you can't get rid of fear, but you can dilute it and give it, give it some ideas and purpose. Exactly, yep, there's, I don't really believe in fearlessness, but I do believe in cultivating the muscle to move through fear. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. Okay. So shaunamarie.ca to get your free resource. And we're going to finish up with a couple of quick questions. Shauna, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Uh, what book are you reading right now? I'm reading Psycho-Cybernetics by Maxwell Maltz. 
That is a mouthful. <laughs> uh, we're just into the brand new year, but what is the best thing you've done for yourself so far this year? Oh, this year. Oh, I thought it was last year. I, this <laughs> year I have taken time for me and mm. just done exactly what I wanted. New Year's Day, I did nothing. I sat around and watched Netflix, ate popcorn, and had a good, a good Shauna day. Oh, I love Netflix therapy. <laughs> no. And last one, if everyone did blank, the world would be a better place. What's your fill in the blank? If everyone would find one good thing, a piece of gratitude, I know the world would be a better place. Mm, yes, gratitude changes everything. Oh, we touched on so many foundations of creative self-care. Well done. <laughs> Thank you so much for listening. Again, you can go to Christina Marlette, that's M-A-R-L-E-T-T dot com to get your free resource and apply to be a guest expert. And I'm so grateful to have you here as a listener today. Thank you. And remember, there is nothing selfish about self-care. It is a practice that when you prioritize your own well-being on purpose, you benefit everyone around you. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye for now.